Hello and welcome to my Floss Tube channel. I'm Jean Farish and I am here once again to talk about all kinds of things having to do with cross stitch. First things first is many of you are aware that there's a huge national, actually international trade show um, coming up next weekend, last weekend in August. Uh, now this is a wholesale trade show, so this is a sort of uh, shopping that your local needlework store does to um, restock and get new releases so that you can enjoy them. Um, and so for the first time in 20 some odd years, I am participating in that wholesale market. And um, so it will be a first for me doing it online, uh, which will be kind of an interesting experience. So I have 10 designs that I'm going to be presenting them um, to the shops. Some of them are things that have only been um, shown to a very small market, and that is the people who have gone on my cruises. Um, and others are things that have been around for a while that are still popular and um, I think still have um, some life left into them. So um, this episode and the next one, I'm going to be talking about those 10 releases. So first up is one that I designed for the British Isles cruise. This is, um, was a whole lot of fun for me um, because of the cow. Uh, so this one's called the Blackbird and the Guernsey Cow. The hard thing for me was um, thinking of what to put in place of the lines where um, we normally put Stitchers Escapes Cruise and list the cities where we're cruising so that the people that are on that cruise will have a commemorative sampler um, to help remember. And um, so by eliminating that part, I then had to put something in its place. And I, at first I was sort of stumped. And then once I got going, I actually came up with 12 different, mm, let's call them focal points or key phrases that um, you as the needle worker can choose which one uh, suits you best. And, and in addition, I also included an alphabet so that you can make up your own or you can put your family name or, you know, just kind of make it your own. So this is um, the Blackbird and the Guernsey Cow. And um, like I say, the only people who have seen it are the stitchers that were on the British Isles cruise last June. So that's one of my market releases. Next up is the hair in the basket. Now this one goes all the way back to 1996. So this is on the opposite end of my sort of timeline. This one I call a vintage sampler. It was first the commemorative sampler for the Spirit of Cross Stitch Festival again in 1996. And I decided to include it for two reasons. One is the, the quote, which is actually something I wrote. It doesn't come from anybody like famous or whatever. But I, I just felt like it really embodies why we do need to work, why we teach need to work, why we want to share our need to work, why we want to kind of keep it going. And so I felt like that it still, again, has some life in it. It's still a timely, um, a timely quote. And um, the other reason is because it really is the sampler that kind of started um, a whole series for me. I call them my ampersand samplers because an ampersand is that either simple or fancy plus sign that we use so often to indicate the word and. So um, that's the hair in the basket. And again, that's one that, you know, it's not brand new, but again, there's, a, there's so many people that are stitching now that were not stitching in 1996 that, you know, may not have seen it. So anyway, so that's why I included that. So that, that's two of them. Um, and to continue in that um, sort of theme, um, I'm also including my two tropical ampersand samplers. The first one was two turtles and a flamingo. 
and that was from one of my cruises. Um, oh golly, when did we do that? Nin uh, 2022 maybe? Anyway, um, I just, it was the first time I really got into just sort of the bright, sunshiny, happy colors. And um, so that's the two turtles and a flamingo, which again has kind of been around for a couple of years, but um, not widely distributed. So the egret and the dolphin is the sampler that I did for the 2024 Floss Tubit Sea Cruise. So the only people who have seen this one um, have been the people who were lucky enough to be on that cruise. So um, the, the two really kind of go hand in hand. They, they pretty much use the same color scheme. Um, one has a Van Morrison uh, lyric to it and the other one a Jimmy Buffett. So, um, and again, like the um, Blackbird and the Guernsey Cow, I am included 12 different focal points or key phrases that you can use, um, including for the Jimmy Buffett one, Parrot Head. And the fifth uh, ampersand sampler that I am releasing at this online wholesale market is the Bear and the Moose. Now this one's had a little bit of exposure. It was first the commemorative sampler for the Alaska cruise. Oh golly, when did we do that? Was that 2019, I think? And then it's been a PDF in my uh, Etsy store and a, a couple of shops have had it. Um, but you know, Alaska is just one of those destinations that Everybody wants to go there, and uh, even once you've been, you just you just want to go back again. And, and then, of course, you've got all the people that live there as well. So um, I'm hoping that um, people are going to enjoy that one as much as the others. So that's five of the ten things that I'll be releasing at the Needlework Marketplace um, next weekend. And I'll show the other ones in the next episode. So if you see something you like, let your local shop owner know, and I will be happy to ship it to them. So these will be uh, all uh, paper copies. Um, the cover will be um, in cardstock. And um, for those of you who have um, stitched from my charts, I, I have to say mine are, mine are really, really clear and um, large enough that you don't have to like run right to the to a, a copy place and enlarge it and um, if there are stitches other than cross stitches that are optional in the in the project then I show diagrams um, but also um, sampler September is coming up so any one of these ampersand samplers would be perfect for that and it got me to thinking that it's been a while since I've done a stitch along. So I let my um, Facebook group, my stitch along Facebook group know that um, I'm kind of earmarking the hair in the basket as a stitch along for the month of September. And what I will do in my Facebook group is kind of, um, kind of divide it up uh, and give like some deadlines that if you want to get it done in the month of September, how I would break it up as far as goals for each week. But you know, sampler September doesn't mean that you have to start and finish the sampler in those days of September. Um, so, um, oh, and I will also have um, video tutorials. Now, the hair in the basket has a couple of really interesting stitches. Um, one of the ones that I absolutely love, and it's not one that I have often found a place for it, but it worked out so well in the floral border of the sampler. And this is the cross corner cushion stitch. Um, it's actually a lot simpler to do than what it might uh, appear to at first glance. It is a stitch that you need to do on linen or even weave. It, it, it's not going to work on Aida. I mean, you could kind of, I don't know, I've never tried it. I, and I imagine you could kind of force it, but you have to be really, really careful in doing it to get uh, a good look. So I do have a cross-stitch substitution um, 
within the chart pack of what to do in place of the cross corner cushion stitch. But what I want to, the point I, the reason I'm bringing it up is the point I want to make is that uh, I will have video tutorials for that and the other stitches that are in that sampler. Now, some of them, like the fishbone stitch, um, is the fishbone stitch in that one? Another fishbone stitch is, one of the, is in one of the other ones. Um, the herringbone stitch can be done on Aida very, very easily. So if you've never done a specialty stitch, I would really recommend that you that you try that one. And, you know, at least try it. If you try it and you don't like it, you know, just take it out. Um, which reminds me, I, I posted this on my... Uh, on my Facebook page. I didn't get a photograph because I was um, driving by myself. If I had had a passenger in the car with me, I would have asked them to take a picture. The car in front of me, the license plate was, yes, I frog. Um, and I just, as soon as I saw that, of course, my mind went right to ripping out. And I have no idea why the person who has that as a vanity plate chose it. I don't know whether or not they're a needle worker or whether it, it has some other meaning for them, but I thought you might might enjoy that um, sort of license plate sighting. Okay. Um, oh, so if you want to join in on um, Sampler September, join my Facebook group. It's just J F N S A L, standing for Jean Ferris Needlework Stitch Along, and um, mention that you saw it on this Floss Two episode, and I will. Uh, add you to the group, and um, then you can get the chart from your local needlework store or from my Etsy shop. Um, this one works really well on any, mm, I like like a soft white, not like a brilliant bleach white, but like a soft, mellow white um, fabric. And as I said, it can be done on linen, even weave, or Aida. Uh, and I have the color code both for DMC and for um, Cosmo Floss. So, man, I'm having like these marshmallow brain moments here. Okay, what am I going to talk about next? Have you ever heard people talk about getting together to stitch? Um, people who were once strangers but had this hobby in common, or maybe I should call it a passion in common, and they get together either like in some sort of a local um, chain like Panera or uh, a non-chain similar sort of coffee house setting. And they get together maybe once a week, sometimes once a month, um, just to stitch. And from that casual encounter, they start forming really great friendships. And I don't know about you, but whenever I... I'm aware of these um, going on. I'm I'm a little green green jealousy uh, tinge of saying you know I would love to be a part of that, and um, so I want to I want to speak to that for just a moment. Um, one of the reasons they're so attractive is that for most people their cross stitch hobby is very solitary. And we human beings are pretty much social animals. Even if you are, you know, self-labeled as an introvert, um, I'm sure, you know, there's, there's a need to be with other people. And I think especially when you are passionate about something like cross-stitch and maybe the people in your immediate inner circle, maybe your family, um, a spouse, a uh, sister, sister-in-law, children, kind of like don't get it you need somebody in your life who does get it and so that is one of the benefit of these sort of get-togethers so a couple questions how do you find out about them and if there isn't one where you live or at a time during the week that works for your schedule how can you get one started so let's start with the how do you find out about them one place to ask is if you have a local needlework store. Um, a lot of them have a stitch night or a stitch afternoon or a stitch morning or all of the above. So ask them whether or not they currently have a get-together that you can join. So that's one option. 
Um, another is um, through social media. Uh, I keep saying Facebook, and I know Facebook is kind of like, how long is it going to trend? How long is it going to be a viable part of, um, of our way of communicating with each other? I mean, it's sort of like a community bulletin board. And so um, that's where I find out about them. Now, here in North Carolina, we have two, um, at least two really active Facebook groups. One called the Star Hill, Star, ah, one called the Tar Heel Stitchers and the other one, the North Carolina Stitchers. And they both um, provide that service as far as people can um, come into the group and announce when they're going to be having these get togethers. Um, other than those two, I don't really have a lot of suggestions. So I'm hoping that if you're watching this and you've got a suggestion, would you please leave it as a comment so that uh, others can see it or I can um, talk about it in a future episode. Now, I think more to the point is how do you get one started? Um, and I have, I have, you know, I, I'm not un- how do I want to say that? I'm pretty opinionated on this topic. So I don't mind sharing um, my observations and my thoughts about this. First of all, find a place that's public, that has um, free parking, and that's easily accessible. Um, a public library, uh, again, a coffee house, um, a restaurant during non-busy hours. Um, that's that's where I that's where I would get started. Now there are people who have these in their own homes. I'm I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm 100% comfortable with that. Um, if you if you already know four or five or six people to invite into your home, you've you've got a self-made group. So I'm really not speaking to that kind of a situation. Now it's very possible that you start in a public place you form these friendships. And at some point in time, somebody might say, well, you know, nice weather's coming. I've got a nice deck or a patio. You know, you're invited to my house, um, blah, 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 blah. And that's fine if it develops into that. Um, so besides looking for a place um, that has uh, free parking and that the parking is um, easily accessible, um, I would also look for a place that, um, has public restrooms, um, that the lighting is good. Um, I mean, it's not uncommon for people to bring their cordless uh, lights with them, but it's always great if there's also some natural light. And I think, I think that that's, that's not a deal breaker to me because again, people can bring their own lights. But if, if you have, um, scouted out one of these locations and you know that you yourself as a stitcher would definitely be bringing a light, some sort of light, then make sure you uh, include that in your announcement. But to me, the most important thing is be clear about the day, the time, the name of the place, the address, the city, the state, perhaps um, a phone number for the restaurant in, in case somebody needs it, like if they've gotten lost or whatever. Um, it's becoming less and less of a thing now that most people have some sort of G GPS, but not everybody does. And I say this because um, when I when I see a post about a group getting together and they name the restaurant or the coffee house and they don't say anything about even what city or state it's in, it just doesn't feel very welcoming to me. To me, it's it's sort of like a code. Like, well, if you don't know, if, if you don't recognize the name of this coffee house, then you aren't invited. I mean, is that sounding paranoid? Maybe it is. I mean, I, I might be overly sensitive about that, but I, I think about all different personalities types. And again, you know, for the person who's a little bit shy, that's sort of off-putting. I mean, don't, maybe it's not off-putting. Maybe what it is, is it puts a hurdle in place that makes it that much more difficult for the person to join you. Um, so why put a hurdle in place? Just, you know, 
give the give the details. Um, I would also say that you need to give it time. If you um, if the best time for you is Saturdays from two to four, um, you announce that you go the next Saturday at two o'clock. And if you're there by yourself, you get the stitch. And then, but you, but you put it out there again and maybe the next week one person will come and maybe the week after that two people will come. So don't, don't expect overnight success. Expect this to be something that you're going to have to build over time. And, um, I, 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 I think, I think you'll find that it will work. I mean, when you think about it, you can't be the only person who loves to cross stitch that's available on Saturdays from two to four to, to get together. So, you know, get that started. Um, for me, I have friends that I have developed close friendships with over the years from retreats that I, where I have taught, the cruises that I have organized. And so we have started um, a Zoom get together because we're, we're all over the place. We're in different time zones, we're in different states. And um, w one person in our group just said, hey, I'm gonna do this on this day at this time. I'm gonna send you a link and join if you'd like to. And um, some weeks there's six or seven of us and some weeks there's two or three of us. And in any case, it's okay because we all have busy lives and we just know that it's a time, it's sort of a magnet. We can, a place where we can like get attached and know that that opportunity is there for us on that given day of the week at that time. And, um, you know, I've gotten to where I, I, I mean, I shouldn't say gotten to where, um, I, fi I finally put it in my calendar um, because I kept like, it's important to me, but I would forget about it, you know? So I would say that if you um, find one in your area, go ahead and put it in your calendar. Um, if there's a week that you can't go, it, it, you know, that's okay. But at least it's, at least it's there. You've, you've, um, you've kind of penciled it in. And I, and I think we all have to carve out time to um, develop friendships. And what better way to, than to uh, develop a friendship with somebody that you already know you've got something in common with. So I hope that if you are already uh, part of a group that you'll add comments and maybe give some other tips and suggestions about what makes it work. And if you are getting one started, I hope that you'll um, share your success with us and know that it, it's, it may take several weeks it may even take several months before before it takes hold so anyway i think it, i think it's time that it would be well worth the effort this week we sent out a save the date email to everybody on the stitchers escapes subscription email list and it um to announce our 2026 floss tube at sea cruise um, now, like the other ones, um, I shouldn't say other ones, we've only done one of them, and that was this past January. Uh, and we, then we already have one planned for 2025, which is sold out. Um, so I, I kind of feel like we've got several under our belt, but we don't. We only have one that's actually happened. Anyway, um, the 2026 um, Floss Tube at Sea Cruise is a little bit different and that it's eight days rather than seven, which means we have four, four, <laughs> four uh, sea days instead of three. So um, that's that's a nice increase. That's um, that much more time to, to stitch, relax, and spend time with um, the friends that you make in the group, the friends that you may be traveling with. Um, so that's one thing that's different. Um, we're also, it's going to be in February rather than in January, and our itinerary is different. We are going to Georgetown, which is one of the cities in the Grand Cayman Islands, and we're going to Aruba and Curacao, 
which is why we have that extra sea day because though Aruba and Curacao are very much in the Southern Caribbean. And um, so that's, that's kind of a double bonus to me to be able to go to two islands I haven't been to before and to get that extra um, day at sea. Now the floss tube at sea cruises are, are, are very different from our regular cruises um, in that I invite two other floss tube channel personalities to join me. And in 2026, it's gonna be Carol from the Saltbox Stitcher and Liz and Deb from Country Stitchers. Um, so I am just really excited about uh, meeting these three ladies. I've been watching their floss tube channels for a while, and I'm sure that you will agree with me that they are funny and warm and just, I, I just can't wait to hang out with them. Um, and I hope that you'll, I hope you feel the same way and, and that you'll be able to come along. So one of the main ways that's different is that we uh, only pick ships that have a really large conference center and we set it up um, much like you might experience in a hotel ballroom if you go to a retreat. Um, that's where you're going to kind of sit at a table and stitch. And um, so we have that set up. Um, Country Stitcher, Saltbox Stitcher, and I will each make a presentation um, uh, of some stitch-related sort of fun thing to do. And we'll have games and door prizes, and um, I, it's, it, it's just so relaxing and just so much fun. So I am really looking forward to that. So I will, I'll put the details in the episode description. The details are not on the Stitchers Escapes website yet. It, they'll be up there in the next couple of, um, couple of weeks. Registration will open October 12th of this year, 2024 for the 2026 cruise. And um, so if you are keen about going, um, mark your calendar. It'll open at 11 o'clock Eastern time on October 12th. So, and I tell you, the way time has been flying lately, it's like, it's it's gonna be here before, before I know it. One last thing before I sign off, I'm gonna be at the Stitch and Kitten in Irmo, South Carolina. Um, in November. It's November on Friday, November 8th. I'll do a meet and greet that evening um, or afternoon. We haven't, um, I don't think they've set the, the time yet, but I will let you know when, when that will be. And then the class on Saturday, November 9th, um, will be um, making the three-dimensional um, scissor fob which also can be an, an ornament. I mean, it doesn't have to be a scissor fob. It can just be a small that you put in your little small sort of, you know, whether you have a basket or a dough bowl or whatever. Um, so the main focus for that will be teaching the linen finishing stitch. There will be pre-work. So make sure that you contact um, the shop ahead of time so that you can get uh, registered and they can get the materials to you. Um, they will have them um, the first week in September and we'll start um, giving them out to their local uh, class registrants or mailing them out to anybody who, who needs the mail to them. Um, so call the shop for details and to register. Um, and again, I'll put what details I do have, I will put in the episode description. Um, so, until next weekend, um, stitch happy, stay safe, and I'll see you then.